recording here. All right. So at this point, we left off here, right? Where I'd created a new color map for the gear. That was our last video, right? Uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you a bit of how you could use other image-based texturing, right? Um, remember, you don't have to necessarily do all of the stuff I'm showing you in these videos for yours, but getting some color variation, doing at least a little bit of image texturing here and there is, is what I'm looking for. Uh, I just figured it's good to, you know, maybe overkill, show you a little more of the options. And this is far from ex as extensive as we could go with this stuff, uh, believe it or not. Uh, we're not doing glow. Glow is pretty cool in Blender, but we're not doing that because, well, our character doesn't have glow on it, right? Um, so just trying to kind of remind you about some of the things you could do. Um, so remember, one of the things that we saw the other uh, day in the other video was we can actually fill in color on stuff. So I kind of wanted to reinforce that a little bit. Uh, so in this case, remember, I'm in Texture Paint Workspace, right? Um, I've made sure, you know, biped gear is selected. Uh, you can have biped body on, but um, you don't need to have it on, right? Uh, That's what's great about the outline. You can turn the eyeballs off and on. Shift-I doesn't isolate select also, which I'll often use. But sometimes if you have multiple objects, right, you might want some on and some off. So it's it's... The outliner is still awesome. You'll still kind of want to be able to turn the visibility off of that stuff. Um, and of course, you can see I've got the uh, body pad gear selected, right? I kind of created it the other day, saved it, right? Um, you know, I like having that file external data automatically packed a Blender file on. That way, that way your textures are, are actually in the Blender file. So at this point, then, what we could do is we could easily say, hey, I want to kind of maybe put a bit of a different color on the eyeballs and then the kind of the, the metal here. Because I am going to show you a little bit about a metal map and creating metals here. Uh, it'll be kind of fun. We'll keep it simple and really straightforward, but it'll be, it'll be kind of fun to do and show it off. Um, that way, if you want to do it, you can. If you don't, that's okay. All right. Uh, so first and foremost, let's actually do some uh, filling in of stuff, right? So remember, 8 is texture mode, right? That's that click key for texture mode. But remember, if you hit 3 that sends you back to your normal face mode. So all of your modes still work, right? Object mode, edit mode, and of course, two and three are edge and face. Uh, sculpt mode is five. Texture paint is eight, right? Texture paint is eight. Um, so what you can do is you can come in here, and you don't have to select both for this because our UVs overlap, right? If they didn't, and you were doing asymmetrical texturing, which is absolutely fine. It's just we're trying to make sure things are a little more efficient for us on our devices. Um, since the UVs are overlapping, we really only have to uh, select kind of one side. Uh, so remember, you can always select kind of a face on this side and then shift left click a face on that side because your select link actually works with islands, right? So if I was to just select a face on this side of the island, because uh, C marks the island, and I go to select link, you see how it only selects that side? So that actually works on islands. So you just have to be aware of that, right? Select link, boom. Remember, that's right bracket key. Now, I'm going to hit 8 to go back to face mode, but I've got those selected. So when you go back to 8 for texture paint mode, remember, you'll see this right up here, right? There's this paint mask mode. I'm going to double check this recording. Yeah, okay. Um, right here, it's kind of right next to the texture paint mode menu. It's right next to view. It basically looks a lot like the face selection icon. If you click on it, it's paint mask, right? So it's kind of right, right up here in the top left corner in texture paint. Right? And what that does, you see how everything that wasn't selected, right? Everything that wasn't selected is now kind of grayed out. That means it's masked. You can't do anything to it. You can't paint on it. So that's what's one of the really awesome things about Blender. I can then go to fill bucket right here, right? Remember, there's the draw, and that's what we've been using a lot of. But then a couple down is the fill bucket, right? A couple down is the fill bucket. Now I'm going to go pick a color. Uh, and I probably want this to be kind of much more of kind of an off-white color. There we go. Kind of get slightly off-white. I'm just going to click on that, and that can actually serve as kind of our eyeball color. So I can turn Isolate Select off, and now you'll see that just that's filled in. So what's great is I can then go do this to some of these other parts. So I can go to 3 for face mode again, right? 3 for face mode. We know the selection mode. It's right here. And then I can select a face on that one, and then shift left click a face on that one. Because remember, there's a seam here that makes this top an island and this bottom an island. Kind of like separate UV parts that it peels and unfolds, right? Because remember, UV unwrapping is the process of taking the model and turning it into a, a two-dimensional version of itself to go over 
a picture, right? A 2D image, a PNG in this case. And of course, select linked, right? Remember, that's right bracket by default. I changed mine to spacebar because I don't animate, so I don't really need to see my playback animation. So I was like, oh, spacebar I like. Better for that. Um, but by default, it's right bracket. It's right bracket. There we go. And of course, I can hit 8 to go back to texture paint mode, right? That's where these quick keys for these modes are great. It makes it really easy to go between object, vertex, edge, face. But even when you want to paint and sculpt and you want to go back and forth between the different modes, they've got great quick keys for that, 5 and 8. But we want to go back here and we want to turn this back on, right? The nice thing is you can actually leave that on and make the different selections, right? So if I was to go to, say, 3 for face mode and I did a different one here like that, and then I go back to 8, see how that one? So th if you leave that on, it stays on and just kind of updates it for whatever's there. But you can turn it off and on. It's a button right here. Paint mask. It's right next to the uh, mode menu, right next to view, kind of right here in the top left corner of the texture paint 3D painting window. Fill bucket's on. I'm going to go pick kind of more of a gray color because that'll work more better as a metal. Of course, if you want to be maybe copper or something like that, you can go with like a little more of an orange tint. Eh, maybe do a little orange. That'll be okay. It's kind of a little brown orange, so let's maybe go more orange orange. A little brighter. Yeah, that works. Okay. And of course, I left click, and that fills that in. That's actually a little bright, so maybe turn down the... Remember, you just click on the little kind of color itself, right? There's actually this little color bar, right? If you click on that, either here or here, it brings this up, and you can pick your color. You can make it lighter or darker, right? That's your value slider. There we go, I'm just going to fill that in a little bit darker. That's what's really cool about Isolate Select, right? I now went in there and I easily kind of changed the base color for certain sections of the model. So this paint mask, really cool, right? Do you have to use it? No, you can manually paint all this stuff, of course. But it's neat to know that it is there and that it can be used, right? So now what I want to do is I want to go back to my regular paintbrush, right, the draw brush. And I'm going to click back on color. I'm just going to turn this back to white. I'm going to get it to a whitish color. Um, generally, the color will tint whatever you're painting. So uh, if you just want to paint exactly the image you see, just kind of make it white or really close to white. And then it'll paint exactly the image. Whatever other color you pick or darkness or lightness to value that you use, that will affect the image you're painting, which is actually neat. But you might not always want to use it. So it's kind of if you want to use it, right? If you want to tint your your image different color. So with the draw brush on, right, regular draw, kind of pick our color. I'm going to go to texture, not texture mask, right? We used texture mask the other day to do kind of the freckling, right? Because what that does is it uses an image, and then any pixels that are black, it won't paint, right? Any pixels that are black, it won't paint. Um, and any really dark pixels that are barely paint, right? So it works like a kind of like a stamp, right, where... Uh, the rubber hits the ink, the part of the ru rubber stamp that's raised gets ink on it as you press it into an ink pad. But all the parts that aren't raised don't get any ink, right? That's the way a texture mask works, uh, particularly if you use an alpha image that's kind of a predominantly black and white like the ones you saw I was using. But in this case, I actually want to paint an image, like a fabric. So if you want to paint directly an exact image, you don't use texture mask menu, you use texture, right? So there's a there's the difference between those. So I can go to texture, and of course, we can always add our texture. One of the easiest ways for me to add textures is here. So remember, we go to our properties menu over here. It's always that right side, right? No matter what workspace you're in, usually you'll get this stuff, your outliner and your properties menus. The very bottom one is a red checkerboard. You click on that, right, that red checkerboard. And that, of course, has the ability to click on new to, make, to bring an image in, right? So I click on new. Now, I can make a new one from scratch, right? Although that's better to do plugged into a material. In this case, I want to open one. So this is really just going to allow us to load a texture in, not onto a model in a material slot, but just into Blender that we could use to paint with. So that's why we kind of go to the uh, red checkerboard at the bottom. You could load textures in without actually applying them to an object. So I'm going to go to open. So I don't want to make a new one. I want to find one. Uh, I'm going to go to my... Uh, Textures viewport really quick. Now, here's the thing. You could uh, go up here to switch to thumbnails. Right? The very last one is thumbnails. 
right? So these are kind of different list versions. That's thumbnails, right? When you click on that open, it brings up a browser. And you can go find wherever you save these textures. There's a fabric right there. I might go to stencils, and there's some other textures in here I might want to use. In this case, um, well, actually, these would probably work too. Depends on where you have it, what kind of texture you have, what kind of texture you want to use, right? Uh, I think I'm actually going to do stencils. Now, where do you get these textures? The internet. Or take a picture with your, cam your phone, right? Um, you're going to have to find your own textures if you're going to use some image-based stuff. Now, you can always just do Google searches. You do have to be aware of copyright issues and watermarks, right? If you see, like, a watermark going all the way through it, like a text, um, like sometimes you see, uh, like, one, two, three uh, stock photo or something like that, you shouldn't use that, right? That's somebody that wants you to sign up to an account and pay for that texture. Um, textures.com, you can actually create a free account, and all those textures there are uh, royalty-free. That means you can use them particularly if they're the, free, the ones you get in your free account, you could use them uh, for commercial or educational use without worry. That's the safest bet. Um, so you'll have to find some of your own textures. Uh, doesn't take that long. There's this thing called the internet, right? <laughs> so I'm going to click on this uh, leather and hit open image. And now we have this texture is loaded in, right? And we saw that the other day that we could load these textures in like our alphas, right? If I go to texture here, right, you'll notice it brings this up. And you'll see there's the texture. But right next to texture.001, there's kind of this little, you can see it's kind of already set up and on. But you see there's kind of this little window next to it. If you click on that, you see how there's that alpha I loaded into paint freckles. But now there's this one. So those textures will actually stay loaded into the scene, which is kind of cool. That way uh, you can keep reusing them if you want to. So if I needed to use this one, I could, but I want to use that one, so I click on it. So this, if you click on this, it allows you to kind of tell which texture you want to use. So texture menu, click on the very, very kind of uh, far left side little, little small little button right here, and you pick your texture. Now in this case, I could use view plane with this, right? So you can actually use this with view plane to stamp down this color image. Right? It just kind of keeps stamping it down. However, if you want a bit more control over exactly the image, because it kind of, this just repeats it over and over again, and there's, it's generally kind of um, generic enough that it actually would work for this, but you can also switch your mapping type, right? It's kind of right below this mapping type from view plane, uh, although usually by default set to tile though, but you can also do view plane. And that really just kind of stamps it down, right? It, the brush moves, and it kind of places the image. And then you move the brush a little more, places the image again. You move the brush a little more, places the image again. That's what that stroke spacing controls, right? The more you turn that up, the more space between the stamping of it, right? We saw that on our texture mask. But you can actually switch your mapping type to something called stencil. It's at the very bottom, stencil. And what that does when we turn it on is you'll see it brings the image up here. Now, by default, right mouse button moves it. Shift right mouse button scales it. And control right mouse button rotates it. Now, you will notice that alt right mouse button doesn't zoom anymore. It's kind of one of those weird things that it's kind of set up um, to kind of work that way. So if you're painting like this, unless you want to change it in the... Uh, preferences, right, the uh, key mapping, you can, but you guys probably won't do that, so uh, you can still use scroll wheel to zoom in, right? So alt left will still rotate, alt middle will still move, but when you use a stencil, alt right won't zoom. So you probably want to use your uh, scroll wheel to zoom in. But you'll notice the stencil brings the image in exactly as you see it. Right mouse button moves it, shift right mouse button will scale it up, which always works the best if you grab from a side. And control right mouse button will rotate it. In fact, something I recently learned about this is if I was to hit X right mouse button, or X, I'm trying to remember what it is, but the, it's X, uh, I'm trying to remember the quick key for it. Ah, I'm forgetting it right now. Um, 
You can actually stretch these though, right? I'd have to look that up again. There's like a, <laughs> a quickie for it. But you can actually, um, uh, da, 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 let's see, what is it? It might actually be right and then X or middle and then X. Ah, I'll have to look it up again. You can actually stretch these though. So you can actually make it longer along one axis. Uh, I'm just blanking on it right now. Um, so you actually can do that in Blender. I just can't think of it at the moment. We didn't really need it for this anyways, but you can actually do that. You can stretch these. So uh, in this case, you see how you can put the image exactly where you want it, and you can paint exactly that image. Let me set that back to white. <laughs> um, and you can paint the image exactly as you see it, right? So you're painting exactly the image as you see it, projecting it from 2D. Stencils are cool also because they let you see what's really happening when you're texturing. You notice how this image is always kind of lined up with the camera? That's really what's always happening when you're 3D projection painting, whether it's just regular color or even viewplane. Stencil kind of really helps to highlight it, though. But you'll notice you can just get in here. And remember, turn off the X here. Since our UVs are on top of each other, this can do weird stuff. So you should usually have that off. There we go. But you see how you can actually use an image exactly as it is. Like I said, you know, uh, shift right mouse button will scale it. Right mouse button will move it. Control right mouse button will uh, rotate it. I'll have to look up those quickies again. But you can actually um, stretch them, right? Which is really cool. I kind of you don't you need it a lot, but it's useful sometimes. But you can actually stretch the stencil. Just blanking on the quick key right now. <laughs> All right, so kind of painting this a little bit. So of course, view plane can be used with a direct color image. Uh, it doesn't have to be masked. Uh, but stencil gives you the neat ability to kind of say, hey, I want exactly this, right? I want exactly the image. And you control the size, the rotation, right? Control right mouse button. Shift right mouse button will scale it. Control will rotate it. Right mouse button will move it. And you can see we can go in here and just paint this image. So quite neat. And I want to make sure you guys know that there's actually stencil painting in here, not just view plane, right? That you can actually paint with stencils. All right, so that gives us some texture there. Um, and this, you know, really shows us that we could do that. All right, so if I want to, I could uh, go back to texture here. I could turn view plane back on. Remember, if you want to turn the texture off temporarily, you can hit X, turns it off. Switch back to view plane, and we get our normal navigation back. And of course, we could see in here that it actually painted that image. Right? Remember, this is painting onto the model, but really it's painting into the texture and just giving you instantaneous real-time feedback on the model. So kind of neat, right? And of course, if we wanted to kind of paint uh, some metal, we could create a whole new material, right? So I can just go to my uh, red ball, right? It's right above the red checkerboard in the properties menu. And I could scroll down to roughness, right? I don't actually want to paint metallic. And I'll, I'll bring my specular down too. Remember, you can control the sliders for these, right? So I'm going to turn metallic up on this a lot. And you see how all of a sudden it starts to kind of have a, a metal look to its shininess? So you can turn the metallic slider up to make it more metal. If you turn roughness down, it makes it more reflective, right? So what I want to do is I want to paint roughness so that I can actually have most of this not metal, and then just get a bit of roughness for metal. Of course, you could paint a map for all these channels, but if you're just looking to kind of use one texture to control this, I found roughness works pretty well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the gray dot right next to roughness here. Remember, this is just the kind of uh, red ball here at the, towards the bottom. And it gives me these options. I'm going to go up here, right? You might have to move your cursor up to see all the options. Because sometimes... With roughness, you can paint a lot of other different stuff, right? So you might have to just move your cursor up to the very top of this menu, and then it just auto-scrolls. Texture, image texture. There we go. That's now plugged in. We can click New. 
right? I'm going to call this uh, biped gear, let's say ref. And I'll make it 2048. It's always good to kind of double that initial one you have. So instead of 1024, we can do 2048. Um, I'm trying to remember, I think uh, black is zero roughness, but we can always change that as well as we go. Um, so I'll hit OK. There we go. Yeah, and you'll see black is zero roughness. Now, the only thing you want to be aware of is that. Uh, if you're using, like, say, B-Painter, you don't have to worry about this. It automatically sets it up properly. I have noticed, though, when you plug it in directly in, you might need to go to your shading workspace. And now you can actually see in the shading workspace that there's your normal map, there's your color map, and there's your roughness map. But you'll notice that the roughness is actually going from the alpha to the roughness. So what you could do is you could always... Just kind of click on the roughness dot, unplug that, and then left click drag on the color dot, the yellow dot, to plug it into roughness. And that'll actually give you the proper control. And you can actually see that black is actually highly reflective, right? So you do need to be aware of that, that uh, if you go plug this in, it might just plug in the alpha directly. So go double check that in the shading workspace that the color is plugged in here. It's easy enough to unplug. You just kind of left click drag on the roughness and it unplugs it. And then you just left click drag on say the, the roughness texture here, the color of the yellow dot, drag that up to roughness, right? You left click drag. So the actual shader tree in Blender is really easy to use, but you can actually see the material and all the way the textures are plugged in. Like kind of like a, a tree, a bunch of different branches spiraling off. So I'm gonna go back to texture paint. And in this case, it's going to be easy enough to just kind of uh, do that flood paint stuff we were doing again before to kind of do this. So I'm going to go to 3 for face mode. And what I can do is I can go in here and I can just select all of the shells. And remember, you only have to do it on one side here. On kind of the clothing and the eyeball, because we want those to be not metal, right? So remember, 3 for face mode, you can select those faces on those. Select linked, linked, right? And then, of course, we can go to 8. Turn on that mask feature right there. And what we could do is we could then go in and say, hey, let's, uh, the color's already white, so we should be able to just go to fill bucket. Make sure that's white there, too. There we go. And then if we click on here, you see how it fills it in with white, which is zero in this case. So, like, for roughness maps, I found it's usually inverted. Depends on the map type. Usually black is zero and white is 100%. Uh, some map types, though, it's the reverse, right? In this case, um, white is 0%. And um, although actually technically it makes sense because the uh, higher the roughness, right, the more it's not going to look metal, the more it's not going to look shiny. So it actually makes sense um, that white is 100% roughness, black is zero roughness, and it's lower roughness that makes it look more shiny. So now we can see that that's kind of got that nice roughness. And then, of course, we go back to 3 for face mode. And if I want this to be a little less metallic, I can always select these, right? Select linked. Go back to 8. Mask still on. And if I pick a color that's not white or black, like, say, a mid-gray, you see that's kind of more of like a brushed metal? So it depends on kind of how far you want to kind of make it really, really shiny or not shiny, right? So depending on if you go from white to black, it'll give you more or less. Now, of course, you could paint images with this. You could use a stencil to paint that property, and then it'll kind of be rougher and not rougher in certain areas. But I'm trying to keep this really, really simple for you guys and not, you know, just do some super basic stuff. All right, uh, we can turn mask off. And now we can see we've got this kind of neat setup for us right, where I've got an eye. Now you can find eyeball textures and use your stencil to paint an eyeball on, right? But I feel like this is going to be good enough for what we wanted here. Now remember, I have been doing some texture painting here. So I'm going to go back up to my very top wrench and screwdriver one. And you see there's biped rough, biped gear. I'm going to go to, because uh, biped rough's on here. I'm going to go to image. 
Save as. That way we can kind of uh, save it as a roughness map. I'm going to click back on biped gear here, because I did do some texturing there. Image, because you see how there's an asterisk? That means you need to save it. In this case, I already had that map saved, so I just had to uh, save it again. And of course, I could save the whole scene, so everything's plugged in. And now, we see we've got a bit of image coloring here, a bit of image texturing there, a bit of color variation, and even a metal map. All right. So kind of trying to keep it pretty basic, just show you enough to get you the kind of ideas how to use these tools. All right, that'll be good. I'll stop there.